Chris from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop and I am so excited to be able to bring to you another designer series that is exclusively done with Riley Blake Designs. And this time I have the amazing Amy Smart <laughs> in the house. That's Hi so nice Amy. Of you. Hi. Um, well, so fun to shouldn't be here. everyone just be called and amazing. introduced Thank amazing, you. amazing Thank Amy you. Can Smart? Can you come to my house yes. and introduce me to my kids? Yes, at yes. Home? I yes, will okay. talk to your kids. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> Good Thank to be you. with you. Thank you for having we me. have been friends for a long time, yes. and I I'm so grateful were, for you. you. were starting a quilt store. Really? Yes. Wow. And I was wow. Like, wow. And oh look my at, goodness! Look at this. And look it's at so this. Amazing. Oh, yes. we're just so happy to have you. Thank I you. mean, Thanks for having a lot me. of um, our viewers out there they know you, or maybe they don't know the name mm -hmm. Amy Smart, but they probably have heard of Diary of a Quilter. That, that is, is yeah. your name, mm -hmm. right? That yes. is like your designer yeah, name. Yeah, my designer name. Yeah, Diary so, of a Quilter. Yeah. Tell us where you came up with oh, that name. It's know, a great one. I started writing a blog back in the late 2000s. I think it's almost been 15 years wow. this fall. I can't believe it. Wow. And just came up with a cheesy name on the spot. <laughs> I love and it, it's though. Stuck. And I'm actually, I kind of actually like it now. Yeah. Because it, it really is. It's well, just kind it was of a just record. kind of a record. Here's what yeah. I'm sewing and yeah. here's, here's what's going on in Did you have family. any idea what it would turn <laughs> well, into? Well, probably like you. Yeah. Like, you never no can imagine, right? What, how things would mm -hmm. grow and the people you get yeah. to interact with. And, oh yeah, my so goodness. Amazing. Oh so my cool. goodness. Well, yeah, really like you it. are, you really are an incredible pattern designer. Oh, you, you also are a very good instructor. So I'm thrilled oh. to be able to have you here today sharing with all of us this brand new quilt that you've designed exclusively for yes. us here at my girlfriend's quilt guys. shop and it's beautiful oh, thank you. I mean if we take a look at this this is a stunning quilt that is made with uh, Liberty of London mm -hmm. fabrics yes right I'm kind of okay of, you uh, you are a huge fangirl for mm -hmm. multiple reasons right yes. for those of us who may not be as familiar with Liberty of mm -hmm. London Will you tell us a little bit yes. about the background yeah, of give this you fabric? A little story, a okay. little background about Liberty of London. So, the original Liberty of London store was actually opened in the mid 1800s in, okay. in London. And they became a design house for creating really beautiful textiles. Um, some imported from other parts of the world, they were bringing in these imports, but they also developed a really signature style mm. of florals. I was going to say, what, what exactly is that signature style? I, if you were to mm -hmm. look, you know, across all mm -hmm. these fabrics, you would go, oh, that is definitely Liberty of London. Well, it's so what interesting because they stands out? a variety, but yeah. definitely it's their florals. Okay. Like, they're really good at mm -hmm. timeless mm -hmm. uh, wildflowers, just beautiful ah. floral motifs. Okay. okay. And so that's their signature style. And okay. that's what keeps them timeless. They're just wow. always... And for years, they just printed um, mostly on lawn, oh, okay. which is, you know, a much lighter weight yes. fabric, but it's not... Beautiful it's for clothing. Beautiful for clothing, mm -hmm. and it's a little pricier. So yes. they've recently, in the past few years, started printing on cotton wow. and developed a line for quilters, wow. which I love. And which, we are the yes. lucky recipients of that, yes. right? Yes, so... I'm and then for this. Riley Blake to be able to get the license to mm -hmm. be able to sell that Riley Blake's in the their States, U.S. Right? distributor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's been, I, that's it's, incredible. I feel so lucky. I yes. just, I lived in London as a student, like as a 19 year old, 30 years ago. Oh, wow. And the Liberty of London's where is kind of this icon still mm -hmm. in London. It's this Everyone's beautiful, see like, it. um, Tudor inspired building. Mm. And it's, oh, it's, it's. If you're a fabric lover, which I know all of you are, mm -hmm. it's worth a stop just to be inspired. Yes. And I used to go there 30 years ago and look at the wedding dresses. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, nice. I didn't have fabric on yes. my mind then, but now I no. love to go to uh, London. That's one oh of my, my stops goodness. every time to really? go see the Go okay. see the fabric. Go see the setting. It's wow. just a beautiful spot. So okay. I, it's I a bucket list for me. Yes. yes. It is, it's just they have... Um, Fresh flowers as you walk in the oh, door. It's just a beautiful, it's so such a popular part of the city. So oh, it's a wow. really fun stop. So cool. I was thrilled to get to yes. create with this recent oh, line. Oh my goodness. So your, your inspiration for this quilt mm -hmm. was? So this collection specifically is called mm -hmm. um, London Parks. Okay. And a lot of florals. It's just a beautiful, yeah. I mean, it, it makes me nostalgic. I yeah. Love 
li Definitely. living there. But it's also just a beautiful, timeless it really is. collection. It really so, is. It yeah. is beautiful. And you did such a wonderful job. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Oh, it's so fun. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside okay. the Fat Quarterly yeah. Friends box. One of the things to point out for those of you who may not be familiar with our Fat Quarterly Friends boxes is that just as the box states, there are 12 fat quarters in here. All right, so the box is just filled with fat quarters. You also have the exclusive pattern from Amy Smart that she's created for us called Quarter Star. And what is the finish size of this? It finishes at 76 by 76. Okay, so, so a nice throw it's size. It's a nice throw size. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, in addition to here, you're going to learn a little bit more about Amy Smart and who she is and be able to follow her on, uh, you know, all the social media yeah. channels. We'd yeah. love to have you do that. And then also we have a special gift in your box that is this darling little bee cutter. Oh, it's Isn't so Isn't that adorable? Yeah, it's kind of a nice theme with the parks exactly. and the florals. Yeah. <laughs> kind of one of those things that just kind of brings a smile to your yeah. face. Yeah. So I love this and you'll find that in your box as well. Now, what you won't find in your box is the background fabric. So let me explain that a little bit more. So we have these beautiful fabrics right here and your gift and the pattern. But if you would like to make this quilt that we will be showing today, then uh, you will definitely want to pick up a finishing kit. So in our finishing kit includes the background fabric, which is this beautiful cream uh, solid here. And then you also have the binding that's included in it as well. So your finishing kit is binding and the background. And then we have an additional purchase if you would like to have the Liberty of London fabric for the backing, we have a backing kit that is also in this beautiful pink floral. Yep. This is a beautiful Emily Bell collection mm. right now. It's a it's a very classic Liberty print and it's currently available as a basic in just a rainbow of colors. So pretty. So it's, yeah, it's just oh, classic. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. So if you are interested in uh, the Fat Quarterly Friends box or the finishing kit or the backing kit, you can find those at mygirlfriendsquiltshop.com. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Oh my goodness. Where are we going to begin? So. This quilt, I will say, was designed because these prints are, are busier prints. There are yes. lots of florals, lots going on. Yeah. The white really helps break things up. Okay. So we're I going agree. to be making a lot of half square triangles. Okay. To give us this white space so that the the florals, the prints really mm. pop and they're not competing with each other. Okay. They kind of tie it all together. Okay. And so we're going to, I'm going to show you a fun shortcut this is my thing. Okay, this, this is, is her <laughs> thing. This is her thing. This is why I absolutely love Amy Smart. It's because she comes up with smart ways ha -ha, <laughs> to be able to, you know, get the same results, but do it quicker. So tell yes, us. Tell yes. us what you got. Because I have a short attention span and there's too much fabric <laughs> in the world that I have too many projects I want to do. That's so I right. love finding shortcut oh, methods to I love mass it. produce or to simplify the project. Perfect. So this is a great one. Okay. So. To make these blocks, oh, I'm so excited! I'm cut the background fabric, okay, a um, rectangle of that, and and then another from each fat quarter, okay. You're going to cut a rectangle, and the measurements are in the pattern, okay. But basically, what you're going to do with this rectangle is draw a grid, okay, of three five inch squares by two five inch. Okay, squares. let's go ahead and draw that grid, okay. And I'm going to use a Sharpie. Okay. Just for filming purposes. Yes, don't, yes. Don't, don't do this don't at home. Don't try this at home. We just want to make sure you can see it. That's right. But Great idea. Even if you do use a heavy pen, if you yeah. need to see, it's okay because we're going to rotary cut on those exactly. lines. They'll be in the seams. It's okay. Yeah, But absolutely. I just didn't want anyone panicking yeah. that I'm using a Sharpie <laughs> on Liberty Fabric. Yes. Okay. okay. Let's see what happens here. So what you've done is you're dividing this up into five-inch increments. Okay. Yes. Yep. All right, perfect. And then I'm going to draw a diagonal line, one diagonal line in each of the squares. How do we know which way that diagonal so line is? So I'm going to go. draw, and I'll show you, but there's okay. also a diagram oh, good. in the pattern perfect. itself. So if you don't want to refer back to okay. the video, it will be there as an easy reminder. Okay. And you're going to repeat this process with each, each fat quarter. Okay. 
Okay, almost I there. love this. You know, it reminds me a little bit of like uh, when we do, sometimes use foundation yes. uh, mm -hmm. paper. Is that kind yep, of the kind idea? Yeah, kind of a similar thing. I love it. So once this is drawn, I like to pin. And there's a reason, there's a method for this madness. Okay. Like, the background is bigger mm -hmm. because we're going to sew a bunch of seams ah. on this layer. And if it kind of shifts, to shift. you could yeah. lose some. I get, so totally this is get just that. an easier way to keep an eye on everything. Okay. Perfect. Not shifting. Perfect. Okay, and so we're just putting I a just few put pins in. Just put a few in pins in just so things don't slide around too much. Just as long as they're in so away from where you're going to be sewing. Yeah. yeah, away from those drawn lines. I love this. This is great. This is one of my favorite shortcuts. Wow. Because half square triangles are such a building block, right? right? And if you're making a lot of the same, this mm -hmm. is such a great time So saver. if you think about it, you're actually making 12 at the same time, yes, right? Yes, make 12 half square wow. blocks Wow, okay. Time. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. All right. So we're going to take this. this over to the machine. Okay. We're going to sew a seam next to the diagonal line on both sides, actually, of the diagonal okay, line. Okay, so we're doing a quarter inch, a quarter -inch from seam. there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just, I can just demo it, but I yeah. just... Um, I don't even break the seam. I'll just come all the way down oh. and just quick. Okay. So, so it's like one big road map one, that yes, you're just following exactly. That's around a great and around. Analogy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Okay. okay. Let's do it. Can we do it? Yeah. Okay. And before I start, I do want to, um, we're using this gorgeous baby lock Altair. Yes. And I personally like to, I'm just looking at I like to sew with a scant quarter of an mm. inch. Tell us why. Because when you're piecing a lot of blocks together, mm -hmm. it's really easy for, well, basically, when you sew a quarter inch seam and then you press open your um, pieces, just where that fold mm -hmm. is, or maybe depending yeah. on the thickness of the thread, thread you're using. Yeah. Well, thread takes up space. It does, mm -hmm. yeah. And so yeah. you can lose just a hair. Uh -huh. It probably doesn't matter too much on a really simple block. Mm -hmm. But once you're, these blocks are going to be made up of lots of seams. Right. And so we don't want the. Well, even, even a little bit off, yeah. it can snowball. Yes. Right? If you've got a, you know, if you're off just less than an eighth of an mm -hmm. inch, but mm -hmm. you're, it's across four seams. Yeah. A block's going to shrink by almost half an inch. Definitely. So, so just. So you like the your, quarter inch, a uh, scant quarter a inch. A scant quarter inch. So it's just a titch shorter than. Just a titch. Like, so here's how I measure it with okay. a ruler myself I put the my ruler right on the line where I'm going to sew okay and I want the seam to run next to that line instead of underneath the line uh, that's how scant mm -hmm. it's like just a thread mm -hmm. width different okay so I am going to recommend that with this quilt yes because this quilt has the pieced border all yes. the way around we just want to be really careful not to have blocks it's going to be a big small, deal because mm -hmm. it could it could make things hard. Yeah. I learned this the hard way. Just so you know, <laughs> you're not alone if, there. You, if you have the same problem. <laughs> there you go. So I'm saving you that step. There you go. Okay. I love that. Let's go ahead okay. and sew this. Okay. We'll just sew this first seam, and then we can measure and see where we're at. And then I'll show you how I roadmap the rest. Okay. And let's see. That actually looks pretty good. That does. Yeah. Looks great. So this looks great. It's see if I don't if you can see it's light thread, but the seam is running just inside that quarter inch mark. So mm -hmm. we're gonna just I'm not even gonna move the needle. I love where it. Where it's set is great. And each every machine's different. Yeah. So you will have to play with your own machine, your Definitely. own quarter inch foot. Yeah. It's a good thing to like be yeah. aware of and yeah. and and learn how your machine works best. I agree. All right, let's do okay. this. Okay. And just while I'm flipping this around, you only need to sew next to the diagonal lines. You don't need to sew a quarter inch seam on the straight lines. That extra background fabric makes it easier to fit itself. So. 
Oh, definitely, yeah. This is something to hold on to. And... Okay, so as you can see, we... That quick. We yes. Hit all <gasps> sides. I of love our this. Isn't that great? Yes. Okay, now let's start. Okay. We'll start cutting them up. Okay, this is going to be fun. Make sure I <laughs> don't run over any pins. Yeah, good idea. All right, we've got one here. There we go. Okay, so first I'll cut the squares. So we're just cutting directly. Just directly on the drawn lines. On the drawn lines. All okay. Of both the, the um, diagonal and mm -hmm. the um, horizontal and vertical. Okay. I'm just going to leave this like this because we're just going to square it up anyways. So okay, perfect. You don't even need to trim. One, one less step. Yeah. So I'll just end up with a pile of 12 half square triangle blocks. And I won't walk. They're just going to look like oh this. Oh my goodness. Isn't that I great? love it. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. This is my other favorite. Okay. <laughs> half square triangle tip because yes. I'm uh, squaring up blocks is not our favorite part. Yeah. It can be kind of tedious, <laughs> but it really makes the difference it does. In, a, in a clean, yes. like beautifully pieced quilt. I totally quilt. agree. So it's, worth, yes. it's worth the time. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. These are drawn slightly larger yes. anyways. Uh-huh. Be so you need to, not only do you need to square them up, but it's also just to allow them to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I squares. like to think of it as just like a little trim trim. It's just yeah. like a little haircut just, and it makes it just perfect so and ready to. Yes. And then yeah. you're ready to assemble your blocks mm -hmm. and they just come together so much yes. nicer. Yes. In the long run, I think it saves a lot of mm -hmm. frustration. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to let you so, demonstrate oh, this ruler because okay. I love this one so I, much. Oh, and it's one of my favorite. You tricks. know what? I, I love the half square triangle ruler. This is uh, from Tucker trimmer this is the tucker trimmer one uh, for those of you who may be familiar with it and if you're not this is one of those must-have rulers and I, oh okay. it's so it's such it's and, the and best there's, investment there's lo there's mm -hmm. lots of them on the market like another one that i love is eleanor Bourne's quilt in a day mm -hmm. half square triangle mm -hmm. ruler so there's lots of different options mm -hmm. out there but this is my go-to yeah um every time and maybe we should demonstrate how you um Normally, square up a half okay. square triangle yeah. just so we can show the comparison and what a How time much saver easier it is, is. right? Yes, because once you see it, you'll never like, go back. It, that is so true. That is so true. Well, yeah. there's lots of different ways to be able to square up your half square triangles, and uh, one of them is with a regular ruler. <laughs> Typically, with you know, you would actually open it up and then you would trim it up. So you would go four and a half and and four and a half and. Like and this. it's nice when there's a diagonal line. Yes, yeah, so if you have use. a 45 mm -hmm. degree line yeah. and then you're, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do some movement mm -hmm. around left, right, up, down, and get that four and a half inch. I don't love doing that. Mm -hmm. Another way that is out there is to keep it closed and mm -hmm. still use this regular uh -huh. ruler. And from here, you are imagining there's a four and a half inch line going across this mm -hmm. way so you've got to you know go one two three four and then the half mm -hmm. and you mark it on that line and then you're counting this mm -hmm. and you try to finagle it that way and it's coming here and you have a little bit to to you know trim up but sometimes if you're not careful this is going to yep. slip mm -hmm. and you're uh, you're trying to imagine the line there's lots of you know frustration with yep. that so my favorite method of doing it is with the Tucker trimmer because you've got your like one and a half, two and a half, so forth, and then whole numbers mm -hmm. on this side. And take a look, Amy, you have this line awesome? already built into yes. it. I go, oh, I need to do a four and a half mm -hmm. inch half square Don't triangle? Have to think about it. No, yeah. Yeah. I just put it on and, and away I go. And just so. to specify, you're going to put the the four and a half inch line on the seam. Exactly, not, not on, the on the outside. Not on the mm -hmm. edge, like the, the diagonal yes. edge. You're gonna put that right on the seam. Yeah, yeah. so some, give it a whirl? Uh, let's okay. do it. And, and yeah. sometimes it's just a very little trim, but yeah. it does make a difference, like you said. The, and it, it, in this case, it is. It's not mm -hmm. a big trim, but, but it's enough that it will make a difference. Definitely. And See, again, depending on your seam allowance. Just a little smidgen. And then I just kinda I trim do those same. little dog ears. Yes. And, there you and go. then you're ready to go. Let's do another yeah. one just because that was Here, let's so do much fun, right? It looks messier. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I so, love that. Four and a half inches. And if you're if one side is pretty straight, mm -hmm. like well, use we that. need to trim you this could anyways. Use it. But yeah, you can. And just again, make sure this also is a good because 
sometimes when we're sewing those multiple um seam like as I'm doing that road map mm -hmm. sometimes my seams are going to get a little mm -hmm. bit off mm -hmm. and this makes it okay like this is part of what because we're tr we're squaring it up right it doesn't matter it's not, exactly. it's not something I should, so I can just kind of whiz mm -hmm. that through the machine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I know I'm going to square it up but this is where it's important to put that four and a half inch line right on the seam let's do this one Perfect. Oh, I love it. Not great. Yes, I so love it. So making. how many of these are we making? Quite a few, so we're right? We're making quite a few. Okay. We're making 12 with Out of each, each of the 12 fat quarters. Okay. But then we'll go ahead and use them not only in the star blocks, but also for that border. Oh. So our border blocks are already piece too. Oh my goodness. So this, this is great. This it really is, I mean, you could get it done in a weekend. Oh, easily. Yeah. yeah. And because the blocks are a nice big size, yes. it really does come together fast. Oh, I love so it. So should we walk through assembling the block Absolutely. process? Absolutely. Again, Let's it's do a quick it. one because you've done so much okay. of the work already. All right. So we have all these half square triangles and now we get to play with them, right? Yes. All right. So okay. tell us what's next. So our first, we're going to make this quarter block. It's going to look like this when okay. it's done. So there's a guide. So now I take two. So again, the pattern's gonna tell you exactly what you need to cut okay. for each block. And I forgot to mention, I press my seams to the print. Okay. In this case. All right, good to know. So each of these kites or quarter, yes. quarters of the star mm -hmm. is constructed like this. Okay. So we have two Easy. half square like blocks. It's a four patch. It's a four patch. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. So when you take it to the machine, mm -hmm. I just chain them, mm -hmm. chain it through. I'm going to trim these little dog ears really quick. They're driving you crazy, aren't they? They are. They'll just bug me. <laughs> okay. Make sure I'm back in the That's same. That's right. I love it. Do you want to sure. piece this block? Sure. I would love to. Okay. Okay, I'll trim that. And then I press my seams away from the half square triangle block. Okay, so, so they'll be going in opposite directions. From the half square. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll do this one. And this one's going away. All right, there we go. Okay. And then just, yep. And then flip this then around. Flip that around. Perfect. Yep. All right. So now we have two and two. We're mm. going to now bring these together um, for our four patch. And as you can see here, I'm just butting up my little seams here. That's why it's important to, uh, you know, press to mm -hmm. the opposite side. Right, Amy? Yes, because that will really help those points match up really nicely. And then it just kind of nestles in there. I love that. And then you really don't need pins. Yeah, yeah. You can just kind of feel it. Yep. Okay. Let's see. It's it's almost like Christmas. Yeah. I always feel that way when I <laughs> open it up. Deal. Like, oh, I got to see. Oh, it's so pretty. I so love cute. it. The points match. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Great. All right. So I'll, I'll go ahead that. and press this Perfect. as well. And I should probably set my seam. I didn't do that on the last one. And then I will press open. And I forgot to say that too. I'm glad you brought that up. I recommend setting the seams after you've sewn the that grid together. Uh-huh. I like to set the seam, press, just press mm -hmm, the whole thing mm -hmm. before I start cutting it apart. So when we talk about setting seams, what we're talking about for those who may be new to sewing is basically we're just putting a little bit of heat yeah, on there, right? Yeah. It just kind of helps those the thread relax into exactly. the, yeah, it makes mm -hmm. it easier to work with. And Definitely. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Okay. So you'll just follow the pattern right. instruction and make, make four, make, actually make three. Three. Of each. Oh, because each one has a different mm -hmm. fabric. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you'll make three of these kite or okay. quarters um, from each of the 
12 prints. Okay, perfect. And then to assemble the block. So yeah, a little bit of sashing. A little here. bit of sashing okay. between this again, like kind of gives it that little bit of space. Yeah. So that it's these open diva and fresh. fabrics can each, <laughs> each show that. off. These diva <laughs> fabrics. <laughs> They, they all want to be the star. They're not, they're not competing with each <laughs> other. They're, they're, I love that. They're supporting each yes, other. Yes, exactly. There you, there go. you go. So <laughs> I'm going to remember a that. A little bit Diva of sashing. fabrics, yes. yes. <laughs> and I've already got this half oh, sewn together. Look how beautiful. And then a center sashing. Okay, with so we have just little kind of a cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And so this is how we'll assemble the block so we can oh sew these my two together goodness. and then okay. pull the whole block together if you Ooh, want. I'm so excited. All right. Are you going to do the honors? Sure. Okay. Let's do okay. it. Yes. Oh my goodness. Those are, I'm so excited. This is really a, a very simple quilt. It's really it, a simple. It, it's like, it's simple, but yet the way you have put it together is absolutely oh, stunning. Thank you. It's yeah. a good, I'm a fan of really timeless mm -hmm. classic quilt blocks. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my favorite yeah. style personally. And so it. it was a fun way to play with a really classic looking block. Definitely. Um, but kind of give it some fresh, uh -huh. a fresh look. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to press this while I'm right here and okay. again I'm pressing the seam toward the sashing okay all right then we'll put these two line it up with that sashing strip and you can pin here with the sashing it might if you're more comfortable it's a good it's a good place to do it And then I'll just Ooh, press that this. other side again. I'm going to go ahead and set the seam. And then I, I like to press from the top. I I'm too. I'm pressing my quilt blocks. Yep. Because then I can make sure this gets really nice. Exactly. All the way open. Get that flat. any little tucks out yes, of there. Yes, yes. Right? All right. So there's this half. Okay. I'm seeing this all come together. I'm liking it. All right. Should we finish yeah it. now this this area I would probably suggest pinning I, don't you yes think? I recommend pinning mm -hmm. because this is a longer mm -hmm. um a longer seam yes we, we don't want this to shift get we want it there. to be really crisp so yep. I was thinking the same thing yeah I'm gonna go ahead and 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 our audience knows that Chris does not love to pin but <laughs> But if there is a time when you need to pin, I'm I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah. There are <laughs> this some is one details, of those times. It's worth yes, preserving. Exactly, the, exactly. The crisp yes. little cornerstone because this ends up being only like a one inch little mm -hmm. square, so you want it to look clean. Yes, and not shifting. And this is a good opportunity for me. My seam on this side wasn't perfect, so if you look carefully, mm. or maybe this, I pieced this at home on a different machine, mm -hmm. so. My seams aren't perfect. You can see it's kind of got a little gap here. Oh. And so here's my tip. You have a tip. little bit of wiggle room here, right? I, then this is why pinning, I want to match up those seams perfectly. Okay. Even if it means kind of oh. a little bit of gap right there. Okay. It's going to be it's okay. It's going to kind of ease in, it's, it's right? It's going to ease in. And for that reason, I will sew with this on the bottom. So okay. the feed dogs kind of grab mm -hmm. it and ease it through. Good tip. I like that a lot. I'm sure you're not the only one that that would apply to, right? <laughs> There's a lot frequently. of yes. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Same here. <laughs> for, for as long as I've been quilting, I am still kind of a, a quick. Well, I'm not yeah, a perfectionist. That's right. I, I like again that short attention span. Maybe I like to just get things done. Well, but there are also times when I will take time, like squaring yeah. up half square triangles or right. finding these blocks or right. you know, paying those little bit of details mm -hmm. do make a difference or just pinning right here yeah and I can feel the, that. the one thing I learned uh, one of the things I learned from Laura Pyland was she said and I've never forgotten it she said um, basically at the end of the day does the quilt still keep the person warm yeah. <laughs> Love that too. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly right. You that's, know, it's, it's fine. If it's not perfect, it's okay. Yes, I totally mm -hmm. agree. Perfection yeah. is overrated. Yes. It's okay. In the long run, yes. really, it's okay. It, absolutely. One of my favorite, um, come back here and set the seam again, and 
I'll press this um, again towards the sashing. Um, one of my favorite quilting quotes is from Gwen Marston. Uh -huh. And she said, um, contrary to popular opinion, you don't need to suffer to make a good quilt. Oh, I love <laughs> Isn't that. that? Great? Yes, this is also so be true. Fun, yes, right? it's not <laughs> exactly. It's not about suffering. Okay, I love that. We'll repeat. But okay, you can so see, we're putting these two together. I mean, it's yes, not perfect. We were just talking it's, about that. Yeah, but it's still it eased through and it, it's absolutely. It's, it's no, I love clean. it. It's centered. Yes, we'll do it. Repeat the process on this side. Okay, and we'll do a quarter inch all mm -hmm. the way down there. Right, we'll go ahead and repeat this okay. side, get those pins in. And again, I'm I'm really using my fingers to feel where those to feel it. Seams yeah, it's right. Butt up against Definitely. each other. Definitely. Okay. Right, last seam. Okay. So now I'm going to bring this over and set the seam again for this last sashing. And then open it up and press. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness, Amy. And here's that our block. Is the cutest. Thank you. Oh, I just oh, love okay. this. Thanks. What a fun. This by itself would make a darling pillow. It would. You yes. Know? Mm -hmm. But I love I've it. I even had the thought, I want to make this quilt in like Christmas back yes. quarters. It would just be a fun, quick. <gasps> yes, it would. Yeah. Yes, project. it would. I it love really this. Comes together fast. Oh my goodness. So much fun. Wow. Okay. So it looks like you're going to repeat this for a total of nine of these mm -hmm. stars. Nine blocks. I love it. And I just mixed and matched the different prints okay. so that they're all a little bit different. Basically, kind of random. Random. Yeah. But to, to simplify it, there, you you have three kites of each print. So okay. I just did one of those in each row. Oh, so that's an, a nice that's easy a good way, way to space it. Or you can just follow the diagram yeah. on the pattern. It's the same fabric, so you can use that as a placement guide. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to do this. And then let's talk for a minute about that beautiful piece yes. border. I love it. Yeah, let's talk okay. about that. So after your blocks are pieced, you'll use similar techniques to piece, add sashing on the sides of the blocks okay, and and those rows with the cornerstone oh, in between right. the blocks. Mm -hmm. So sim very mm -hmm. similar technique. Okay, And again, I recommend the, this time you're sewing uh, uh, a piece of fabric that's almost 18 inches long. Mm -hmm. And so I would recommend pinning Definitely. that time. Definitely. And especially when you go to sew the rows together, like right. we did with this little yeah. cornerstone, yeah. pin at those intersections just right. to keep things straight. And square. Okay. So when you're okay. done piecing the blocks, you'll have a bunch of leftover um, Hasper triangle blocks. Okay. And so I bet move. you have an idea for us of what to do. Yes. With them so too. we're going to mm -hmm. use these to piece that outside border, which just gives us it. a little extra pop. Another fun way to use fabric. Definitely. You have enough variety that if there's a print you don't love, you don't have to put oh, it in the block. Okay. So there's options yeah. on this one. Or you can use the pattern again as the guide for fabric placement. Because okay. again, all the prints are in the, in the pattern. After I've sewn mm -hmm. my blocks all together with the sashing, okay. I like to lay out my zigzag half square border. Okay. And so I can play with the fabric placement, kind of oh, see where things go. Yeah. And so basically you're going to sew... Um, and I like to really keep it scrappy. And yeah, put... I think that definitely adds to the charm of this quilt for sure. And it almost looks like it gives the illusion of flying geese blocks it around does. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I love but it. The blocks are already pieced. We already just yes. mass produced a bunch and they're ready to yes, go. Yes, we did. And so when it's time to sew them together, here's one tip that, I, that has helped me as I pieced it. The one thing is it if you go to sew mm. the two prints you'll have all this bulk right right here so i once i've laid it out mm -hmm. and i've decided what order mm -hmm. i want mm -hmm. the prints in mm -hmm. i will go and repress ah so that you have those every other block seams yeah so i'll just do that with this one so okay. i can show you that's a that's definitely a good thing to remember you will just eliminate some of that bulk mm -hmm. when you go to sew it together so that the final border Mm -hmm. on and or quilt well, it. Well, and it will really piece together yes, a, it will a lot piece nicer. Together mm -hmm. Because again, when those opposing seam mm -hmm. allowances hit each other, it's just, it's just easier to 
Exactly. Keep it straight, square. Absolutely. Have the points look pretty right. at the end. Right. So yeah. So I recommend that. So okay. I, again, I would do that the same thing you with this one. Okay. So every other block you're going to end up um, just just repress you that. You tell that seam yeah. where to go. Yeah. Is that what you're yep. telling us? Okay. Yep. <laughs> so every other block, mm -hmm. I just press that seam allowance the opposite direction. Okay. So that when, then I can just stack up this I love that. pile, mm -hmm. take it to my sewing machine and just one after another. Yeah. Put them on, but they'll come together without even pinning it because those seam allowances. Exactly. Pin up they they each lock other. in. Yeah. The other tricky thing, when you go when you're sewing a pieced border mm -hmm. to the outside of a quilt, like a medallion quilt mm -hmm. or something like that, you definitely want to pin. Mm -hmm. That's an important spot because, mm -hmm. because just because of the nature of so many seams. And would you recommend uh, folding that border in half and then the quilt in half yes. and matching that, yes. matching the ends? Perfect. Okay. That is exactly what I yeah. do. I find the center uh -huh. of the both the border and uh -huh. the quilt. Yes. Pin at the center uh -huh. and then pin at the ends. That and way, then, because a piece, a lot of piecing is going to mm -hmm. get a little skewampus. And the, and right? that, you haven't done anything wrong. Right. That just is right. the nature of lots yes. of interlocking seams. Exactly. And so that will really help as you go to attach the border. Mm -hmm. So I pin at the center, pin at the ends, and then I kind of just gently ease uh -huh. pins throughout the rest. So if, if my piece border is a little wider or mm -hmm. if the quilt is a little longer, kind of right. like I did when we pieced that. Um, this little center cornerstone. You're going to fudge it a little You're bit. You're going to fudge it. The mm -hmm. pin, pins, and then put whichever is the one with the gaps, the, mm -hmm. the bigger side, mm -hmm. put that on the bottom as you sew because then the feed dogs will grab it. It's going to work it for you. Yes. It's going to work for you. The feed dogs are going to mm -hmm. do the work yes. for you. Yes. Yeah. And it really, mm -hmm. and then adding this last border, do the same thing. Okay. When you go to add that last border, Again, it's next to a pieced border. Right. So you want to be really accurate when you're cutting mm -hmm. the lengths of your borders. Right. And it's almost better if they're just a little shorter. You okay. definitely uh -huh. don't want them longer. Right. Because if they're just a little, a little shorter, little it'll kind of tighten it, pull yes. it in, and keep your quilt looking nice, nice and, square. and square. Yes, yes. And worst case scenario, it'll quilt out. It'll be fine. <laughs> Long arm quilters out there are going to hate that statement, but yes, you are right. <laughs> but exactly. really, those tips. I know. Make a I always huge tell Lorraine, difference. Lorraine, just do your magic, yeah. And, yeah. and and somehow it just appears beautiful. And yeah. go, wow, it works. It works. But those tips yeah. really do make a big yeah, difference they when do. you're adding borders to any quilt. Mm -hmm. um, I like to measure the center of the quilt. Absolutely. That's the shortest part. Absolutely. Cut your border that length. Yep. And then pin at the center. Yes. Pin at the ends. Ease it through. Yeah. It, it works wonders. Yeah. It's, it's magic. Yeah. It is yeah. magic. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, this quilt is magic. I mean, look right. at this. We were able to get this done so quickly. It's a really quick one. It's a fast one, mm -hmm. but yet it looks complicated. It looks more complicated yeah. than it really is, it, right? It's a re And it's just a classic look. So yes. you can't go Plus, I love it. Shortcuts. Love I love it. I want to see this in Christmas now. I know. I'm gonna and go Halloween and, make it. and fall I know. and all like, the things. Wouldn't it be pretty with like a black? Oh background? my goodness! Yes. I mean, there's so many options. Yeah, and it's a good one mm -hmm. for using busy prints mm -hmm. because again, yeah, this this background will neutralize them and mm -hmm. let them all show off. And yeah. absolutely. Oh my goodness! Wow. Well, are you ready to get sewing? I mean, come on. Fun. Are you so ready? Fun. <laughs> I love this. I cannot wait to get back into my sewing room and start playing with these beautiful fabrics with a beautiful quilt that Amy has designed. And I appreciate all the tips you gave us oh, in, in class today because that was really, really helpful. Oh, good. Yeah. Some and especially tips. don't oh. forget the one at the beginning with making 12 half square triangles at the same oh. time. Oh, that's cool. Next time you have a pattern with lots of half mm -hmm. square triangles. Try that. Try method. that. It's such a great time I love saver. it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love it. How fun. Well, we cannot wait to see your creations. Yes. We can't wait to see what you're making. Of course, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to reach out to us at Girlfriends because we're happy to help. We want to see you be successful. Yeah. And the best of well, that. thank you. It means a lot to us um, to have had you here. It means a lot to us to have your uh, support and excitement and enthusiasm for the Fat Quarterly Friends Box. It's been a fun year, hasn't it? So again, it's not too late to get in on it. If you would like to uh, purchase this box along with the finishing kit 
or and or I should say the backing kit mm -hmm. and who wouldn't want that beautiful backing kit of Emily Bell it's right so pretty so it's, gorgeous just timeless mm -hmm. it's so pretty. Yeah. then you can find all of those at my girlfriend's quilt shop.com and again we'd love to see your pictures so yes. make sure and yes. tag us on social media please you know use the hashtag my girlfriend's quilt shop as well as do you want to go by diary of a quilter or Amy smart either one actually either there one? is an actress named Amy smart oh and every once in a while <laughs> On the Amy Smart Actress hashtag, there's okay. a quilt. Oh, <laughs> like that's me. That's sure. me. That's sure who I she's am. Wondering like where did this quilt keep coming from? Oh, that's hilarious. So maybe Diary of a Quilter. Diary of a Quilter yeah. might be, have best results. Or make sure and tag her at, at Diary of a Quilter. Smart quilter. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Well, it's been so much fun. Thank, Thank you, you again for, for coming me. to it's Logan. Been so fun. So oh. fun. To come up here. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. I can't wait to see what you make. Happy sewing. Good luck. And thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much.